Hey there, Nocturnes! Welcome back to English Me here on Nocturnal Sage, a guide for those left in the dark. Ako nga pala ulit, si Kuya N, ang inyong class president. Noong nakaraang meeting with Sir Jeremy, diniscuss natin yung tungkol sa summarizing na tutunan natin na ang pagsasummarize ay eh, dapat mas maikli yung lalabas. Kasi kaya mo nga sinasummarize, kasi nakalagay lang doon yung kung anong important points doon sa ating binasang pagkahaba-haba. Hindi mo na dapat pinapahaba ang dapat pinapaikli. Yun ang dapat natin, yun ang naalala ko no, sa lecture ni Sir Jeremy. Kayo ba? Anong naalala nyo? So sa gabing ito, magpafocus naman tayo sa pagbasa. Paano natin mas maiintindihan yung binabasa natin? Ang isang teknik doon ay ang pagbabasa ng thesis statement. So sa lecture ngayon ni Sir Jeremy, pag-aaralan natin ang pagkakaiba ng thesis statement sa topic sentence. At saka para sa episode na ito, susuriin natin yung iba't ibang types of discourse. Kung ano ba yung, para saan ba yung thesis statement na ito? Ito ba'y nagkakwento? Ito ba'y naglalahad lamang ng impormasyon? Ito ba'y nagpapabago? So sinusubukang magpabago ng pag-iisip? O nagpapaantig ng anumang damdamin? Yun yung matututunan natin tonight. So samahan nyo na ako sa ating klase with him. Oh English me, oh English me, gusto kong matuto ng English pero hindi alam kung paano. Welcome back class. For tonight, we're going to talk about thesis statements. Paraphrasing in the next episode. So what is a thesis statement and why should there be a thesis statement in the text that we're writing. These are the essential questions I want you to remember as we go along. Okay? And the objectives for tonight are to differentiate thesis statements from topic sentences and state the thesis statement of an academic text. Let's start with the definition. Now we know that every composition has a controlling idea, like what we discussed before. That's why we have the topic sentence, and it is expressed in declarative sentence form. But if you take the controlling idea, the statement of which, to the entire textual level, not just paragraph level, but the entire composition, then what you have now is a thesis statement. The thesis statement is the controlling idea of the entire essay of the five paragraphs that you find in it. So before you write your essay, make sure you have a thesis statement. Otherwise, you will get lost. And we've discussed before that the topic sentence is the main idea within one paragraph. Now, both the thesis statement and topic sentence help in forming what we call discourse. Listen carefully. What is discourse? What is discourse? It is defined in linguistics as any stretch of language larger than a sentence, whether spoken or written, and having a logically consistent and unified structure. Examples of discourse include book, glossary entry, a lecture, or a speech. Now the term discourse is often used as an equivalent of text. And now, if you want it to be short, discourse is anything that has a certain function. I mean, we have different sentences, words put together, right? The entity of that, that is discourse. You put together words for certain reasons, correct? The structure, the unity of the sentences and words that you've put together, that is discourse. And discourse has four possible forms. We have narration, description, exposition, and persuasion or argumentation. Let's deal with each one by one. Narration is a form of discourse that serves to narrate or tell a story. It appeals to the emotions. So it tells a story. It's supposed to tell a story. Now examples include a narrative account of a student's near-death experience, a story about an encounter, 
with a supernatural being. Anything that entertains. Anything that inspires emotion. Description, on the other hand, is a form of discourse that serves to describe or state the qualities or characteristics of something or someone. It appeals to the senses. Now we have types of senses. We have visual, tactile, something that you can touch, auditory, olfactory, the smell, gustatory, the taste, kinesthetic, the movement, and thermal, heat. Examples, a student's description of his or her ideal teacher, a writer's description of a locale he or she has recently visited, a descriptive article on a festive celebration of a town's patron saint. So anything that arouses the senses. Oh yes, it's very possible and maybe it's an imperative that you put together narrative and description. Because if you want to entertain, you also want to tickle the senses of your readers, aside from their emotions. Exposition, it's plainly revealing information about something. It's to explain a certain concept that's difficult to grasp. What I'm doing now, isn't it exposition? That's for you to decide. If it explains or informs, then the answer is yes. Examples include a research paper on the causes and effects of global warming an article on child labor and child abuse. And last but not the least, persuasion or argumentation. It is something that aims to change the beliefs of a person. When we say argue, you merely cite reasons to support your proposition or claim or belief. Persuasion is when you make people change their beliefs, well, not just beliefs, but you make them do something that you want them to do. If you want them to stop using aircon when it's hot, then you have to persuade them to stop using aircon through your arguments. Now, examples include an essay expounding on the retention or cancellation or cessation of a certain agreement, a commercial advertisement, a commercial ad, endorsing a student's manufactured product, making people want to buy that product. In the next episode, we're going to analyze each thesis statement. We're going to identify if they're narrative, descriptive, explanatory or expository, or persuasive or argumentative. And then we're going to de decide if each pair is effective or not. You've made it this far. Continue surviving in the dark. Oh, English me. Oh, English me. Gusto kong matuto ng ingles Pero hindi alam kung paano Sino ang magtuturo Gusto kong matuto na tala of the night. Relentless. Adjective. Ang first three na makakapag-comment sa baba ng meaning at ng kanyang original sentence, yung hindi kinopya, bawal yon ay magkakaroon ng special mention sa susunod na episode. Kaya ano pa hinihintay nyo, doctors? Mag-comment na kayo sa baba bago mag-Friday para masama sa editing ang inyong post. Kung nagustuhan ninyo ang video na to, ilike nyo lang sa baba. Kung may mga tanong, suggestions kayo, mag-comment na lang din kayo. Saka, ishare nyo naman din tong episode na to sa kayong full playlist ng English for Academic and Professional Purposes. Or English Me, para sa mga kakilala ninyong senior high na mag-aaral ng AAP o ng reading writing skills sa darating ng pasukan. Kasi alam nyo naman ngayon na kanya-kanya ng diskarte sa pagkuha ng resources. Wala ng teacher na katabi ninyo physically. Andito, lang namang, andito na lamang si, si Sir Jeremy at si Kuya Ed na gumagabay sa inyo. Kaya kung sa tingin nyo makakaturong yung ganitong klaseng content, oh, i-share nyo lang din naman sa mga kaibigan nyo na talagang magbe-benefit nyo. 
Sumari din kayo sa ating private Facebook group ang tawag doon na Knock with Space. Yung link nasa baba. Kung may mga topics kayo na gusto kong kate na hindi nyo ma-comment sa baba kasi nahihiya kayo makita ng ibang netizens, eh, yung private space na yun, eh, para sa inyong may mga gusto kayong pag-usapan sa classroom, sa labas, na hindi nyo nagagawa kasi nakakahiya para sa inyo, sa tingin ninyo na mapapahiya kayo kapag nag-uncut kayo ng ganun topics. Pero doon sa private Facebook group na yun, walang hiya-hiya. Kasi yun naman talaga yung purpose kaya ginawa yung nocturnal CJ. Para ito sa mga kagaya natin na nais matuto at pag-usapan ang mga dapat pag-usapan na hindi naman na pag-uusapan sa labas kasi pinipigilan tayo ng politika sa ano, politika ng sistema sa labas ng sa school yan. May reason kaya hindi pinag-akwari uh, yung pag-uusapin pag -uus tungkol sa mga tabu topics na alam nyo. Mag-subscribe din kayo at itap yung notification bell para ma mag update kayo sa mga bago release namin every Tuesday at 8pm. Ang Nocturnal Sage ay nakafocus sa apat na larangan. Yung una ay self-conquest. Pag sinabi natin self-conquest, tinutulungan namin kayo, ang aming mga viewers, mga young adults and teenagers mo especially kung paano i-process ang mga let's say quarter life crisis moments or kahit anong negative emotions at paano yung magagamit upang maging kalakasan. Yung next na focus ay communication, kaya nga may English me eh. So, aim ng communication ay para ma-improve yung inyong confidence na makipag-usap sa iba. Hindi lang pala pagsusulat ang tungkol dito ah. Meron din kung paano mag-develop ng confidence kapag magsasalita ka on stage or privately kapag kausap mo kuwari, mas nakakatanda sa iyo or authority figure kung let's say, ikaw ay high school student na hihiya kang makipag-usap sa principal nyo yung mga ganun bang klaseng confidence. Third, ay ang leadership. Kung ikaw ay bago halal na student council president or kung ikaw ay professional at bago promote into let's say middle administration or top, para sa iyo ang challenge na to. Kasi specialty din ni Sir Jeremy ang pamumuno ng mga iba't ibang klaseng teams na may iba't ibang klaseng individual na iba't iba ang mga edad. Yung mga ganun bang bagay. At panghuli ay expansion. Kung napapansin mo na parang stuck ka, hindi ka makausad, hindi ka dumalago sa inyong karera bilang estudyante o professional o both, sa challenge na ito, tutulungan ka kung paano mo papagsasama-sama ang inyong skills at kung ano pang skills yung kailangan mo matutunan para mag-excel ka sa anumang larangan mo sa buhay. Salamat sa panonood. Ako, muli si Kuya N. Tita Kids sa susunod na episode ng English Me dito sa Nocturnal Sage, A Guide for Those Left in the Dark.